heaven, and they're, man, they're fighting over Dave, and they're clearing the air over Dave, so the voice of the Lord. Yeah, somebody right? must have been doing that. So, yeah. Somebody must have been doing that, right? But think about the, the darkest point in your life where you were struggling and you were hurting. Somebody was doing that. My granny yeah. was, she was doing that, yeah. right? Yeah. She was on her knees praying. Fighting over me. Go ahead. Thanks. So I kind of noticed um, while I was at the center. Josh. Like if any of y'all have been to the center, so you know people on up in like third phase and further, if you were new coming in, they didn't really mess with you. For one, I think part of it was you don't know who's going to stay and who's not. So you had to, until they linked up with you, you had to have time under your belt. But then they'd also stand up the smoke pit and be like, oh man, this cat, he ain't never going to make it. You know what I'm saying? So I realized if you pray for people, as much as you talked about them, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying, man, it just blow minds of everybody. Yeah. Because I would never partner up with that. I'd just be like, man, these cats. But you could, sometimes you could tell, like, they come in and have buck in them, you know what I'm saying? But I come in with a buck in me. I can't smoke by the door, and I was like, I don't care nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things the Lord had to work out in my life. But, man, pray for people instead of, Oh, so-and-so, this, or, you know what I'm saying? Man, they're going down through there. Man, you pray it for mm -hmm. them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because me telling Jacob or Patrick or, you know, oh, man, that dude really hurt. Well, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm not telling you to pray for them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's what I was doing. Yeah. Like, that's what I was doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Yeah
You know, you literally feel the presence. Coming in here, you literally feel the presence. You know, um, we looked at, we talked about the life of Jesus and how Jesus, you know, they, he, he preached this amazing sermon and then when he got done, they were like, oh, that's just Joseph. It's just, you know, it's just a carpenter's son. You know, and then it says he could only, he couldn't do any mighty miracles there. He could still lay hands on a few sick folk, right? But as far as like, really ministering on that level where everybody was impacted by it that that spirit of familiarity kind of just brought all that to, to naught you know so just something to think about you know we come in this place as far as honoring one another and really just honoring people in general um, it seems like a lot of times people you're close to like maybe your spouse or sibling somebody that you're real familiar with that you've known really good sometimes it's tempting not to 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 honor them the way that you should because you do know them real good you know but uh, i feel like the lord's really calling us to that place and and even me like to just be able to honor my wife better you know just to be able to humble myself and just honor her like lay down my life you know there's been times that i've said stuff i'm like did i really just say that (laughs) Like, I said the right thing, but I don't like the way I said it. Like, I was kind of jerky, you know? And I think you just get to know people and you get comfortable, you know, but God's really calling us into a place, man, to just really, really honor people, you know? And I was thinking about when we were just talking, when you said that, Josh, about um, just when people are in their mess, trying to still honor them, I was thinking about Nebuchadnezzar. You know how you got this evil king. I mean, evil king. Like he, this dude was so evil. He made a statue of himself <laughs> and told people they had to bow down and worship it. You know, and then you have here's Daniel, man of God, is called in to be a prophet for this king. Can you imagine? And he stayed there and he served him. You know, and of course we know he ended up. He ended up stepping in some judgment because he continued in his evil way, but Daniel was still there, and the end result was after after judgment, he ended up professing God to be the most high God. You know, but Daniel Daniel made a powerful comment in the middle of that. He Nebuchadnezzar had this dream, and the dream was basically about judgment. And Daniel saw it. He was like, "Man, I wish this was on your enemy, not on you." But it was really upon him. But that was just the heart that he had to honor him. You know, to honor the place. But, anyway, God is calling us to honor folks. And when we do, mm-hmm. when we do, it says when we give him the first fruit, when we honor him with our, with our substance, when we honor him with everything that we have, he says that our bats will overflow. Yeah. Like, overflowing power of God is the result of honor. In whatever area. So, in Second Chronicles five, we're going to get ready to to listen to this song and get started. I feel like we already did get started, but get started again or whatever. <laughs> um, all right, in First Chronicles five thirteen, it says they were they were all as one. They were making one sound to be heard and praising and thanking the Lord. Man, there is powerful in praise and thanksgiving. Yeah, in unison. Yeah. Coming together in unity. Man, there is so much to be thankful for. That's the thing about honor. And honor, when we're honoring folks, when we're honoring God, when we're honoring people, try to look at the gold in that person. Don't look at the thing they just said or maybe something they did last week or something you heard about them. Try to think about all the positive things that they've said and done. Because they always by far outweigh the negative. And give thanks for that. Give thanks. Look, even in your own life, sometimes we can think about something we did yesterday. Maybe we got out of character. Maybe even on, even on our way to work, maybe something happened, you know, and we got out of character. And, and the enemy wants us to focus on that. Focus on and remind the devil about the good things that God's doing in your life. Remind him about where you come from. Remind him, I'm not the man that I used to be. 
I'm not that man anymore. I'm the righteousness of God now. I'm chasing after God. I love God. You know, God has first place in my life. His Word has first place in my mm-hmm. life. I don't go to the places I used to go to. I don't talk the way that I used to talk. I don't think the way that I used to think. And I thank you for that, Lord. Hey, brother. I thank you for the transformation. I thank you that I'm a new creation in Christ. Right? And when the enemy starts trying to bring that condemnation about yesterday, that's under the blood. That's under the blood. I'm a new creation. Once we give it to God, it's gone. You know? And then when the enemy tries to bring up those, those, those thoughts from our past, and even yesterday, and we remind him about what Jesus did, right? And I'll tell you, he's going he's gonna to take off. When we start having a praise party in the middle of the enemy's condemnation, mm-hmm. the darkness can't comprehend the light. Yeah. He's got, that's what resisting the devil means. Yeah. Resisting the enemy. You start praising the Lord, right? Because that's what he used to do. He used to praise the Lord. You start doing that, he's got to go. Amen. He's got to go. They were in one place, one accord, one voice, giving God praise and giving God thanks. What's that? That's honoring God. That's honoring God. And what were they saying? The Lord is good and His mercy mercy endures forever. forever. It's almost like Pentecost, but the Old Testament. It's like this. It's like the same scene yeah. that happened on the day of Pentecost. Like, if that was the only sh- praise we had from here throughout eternity, that the would Lord be. The Lord is good, and, and His, His mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. <laughs> There's another place in Second Chronicles chapter twenty, when the king, when they were under attack, and the king was led to put the praise team in the front, in the front of the army. You know what they were chanting? The Lord Lord is good, and His mercy mercy endures forever. You know what happened? Confusion. Confusion on the enemy. (laughs) Said he was blinded, he was confused, and the enemy started turning on himself. And it said they picked up spoil for days. Yeah. Then he had to fight. Yeah. Just picked up the bounty. Yeah. Let that be our, and notice I said, our Let that be our posture when we start entering into praise. Mm -hmm. The Lord is good, and His mercy endureth forever. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that I'm not the man that I used to be. Thank you that I'm not the man I was yesterday. Thank you that I'm not the man I was five minutes ago. Because the Bible says we go from glory to glory. That means every single second of every day, we're being transformed. We're a new man. We're a new creation. Every single day, we're being transformed, and we're going from glory to glory. (coughs) We're moving forward. So I give God thanks for that. And it says, they were chanting this, one place, one accord, the Lord is good, His mercy endures forever. The house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priests could not continue to minister because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Man, doesn't the King James Version, I thought there was a version that said they couldn't even stand. Have you ever heard of that? Yes. Is that King James? Let me look at that. No, it doesn't say that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. So the King James says they couldn't even stand. Mm. Like they were just like, have you ever been in, have you ever been to Pastor Donnie's church? Or, uh, uh, what is it, Adareth? And I, like I'll be, I'll be like worshiping. All of a sudden, I'll look up and I'll be like stepping over people. I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> or like when when Jesus um, um, said, "I am He." Uh, whenever they were asking, yeah, and then boom, they fell down. And said, <laughs> yeah, the glory present, like they were dead. Yeah, it's a good thing about being in the presence. It's a great feeling. It's not like when that presence and that weight comes on you. It's not like a negative feeling going down. It's like a good feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like an ecstasy. It feels yeah. great. It's oh, like the oh. true ecstasy. You know what yeah. I mean? Not the perverted form. And when you finally get back up, you've left some stuff down there. Amen. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Amen. <laughs> you finally get up, you're like, whoa, I feel lighter. Amen. 
And that's what God was speaking to me this weekend. He was like, I want you, you've been talking about honoring one another. He's like, I want you to honor my presence more. And I'm like, okay, Lord. And I want you to share this with the guys. So that's what I'm sharing this morning. Because I just, I started thinking about that because I was like, honor God with your first fruits and your vats are going to overflow. Of course, we know that's talking about finances, blessed to be a blessing. But it's also talking about presence. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a spiritual law, anything. Yeah. You know, if you're sowing into worship, you're going to reap glory, right? Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the same, Amen. the law of the harvest. Like, whatever you're, if you're honoring the presence of God, that's what you're going to get. Amen. That's what you're planting. That's what you're going to reap. Amen. Amen. Well, let's think about that as we enter into worship this morning. We're, we're doing things a little bit different, but I think the Spirit, and you got you to gotta go with, you know, the flow of the Spirit. So we're going to, um, I just want to pray it in and I want to enter into worship and just see what the Lord wants to do after that. Mm-hmm. Amen. Does that sound good? Mm-hmm. Joshua, can you take us in? Yeah. In prayer? Father, we just lift our hands to heaven this morning, Jesus. But we, we ask in Jesus' name that the Holy Spirit comes into our minds and He just clean slates our minds right now. Just cleans out all the muck and the Monday, Lord God, that you come down, you've, you've prepared a place for yourself, you've prepared a temple for yourself, Lord God. Not made with hands, you sanctify it by your blood, Lord Jesus. A place for you to rest, a place for you to sit. I pray that we clear our entire mind, Lord, that you show us what worship and spirit and truth looks like this morning, God that we could just host your presence and host your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Just a posture, Lord God. Just get posture us, Lord. Position us, align us, Lord, to heaven, Jesus. To worship you, Lord. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. Are you ready for him? Your name is worthy to be praised, Jesus. If you be I wore a suit because I came here to do business with Jesus tonight. And I think you did too. So let's do it.
I wish Jared had a show fall right now. <laughs> Do it, Jared. Come on, Jared. I don't have to. Do it with your mouth. Snack time. Snack time. We're going to do something a little different. Woo, everybody smile. So we're going to get ready to pray out, and what I want to do is I want to we're gonna we're gonna pray for one another. And what we're gonna pray for is we're gonna pray that. We're going to pray for a fresh fire, and we're really going to pray that God would ignite, that God would ignite fresh fire, that God would ignite and begin to reveal what He's placed on each one of our lives, that that would be birth. Fresh fire, and I'm just going to pray that, like Josh said, Josh said something as we opened up and it kind of stuck with me when I was listening to Break Every Chain about after we experience God's presence in a setting like that, whatever we came in with that's not of Him should fall off and we should leave it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we're going to stand up and we're going to, I want you to touch the shoulder, get in, get in a line coming across and I want you to touch the shoulder view. And I want you to I want you to pray for pray for your brother. We're praying for we're praying for fresh fire and vision.
It's just been hurting me all week. Okay. It's real busy Saturday. Um, it ain't yeah. 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 Father, I just come up for you right now. It's busy in this Lord. Whatever's going on. Healing and wholeness right now, Lord. I mean, you want just thank you for no, no, nothing no, missing no, or broken, no, Lord. Everything functioning no, no, properly, Lord, the way that you designed it, Lord. Even better, Lord, than the way that you designed it, Lord. Come against and bind out any, any sickness or any, any plot of the enemy. Lord, whatever it is, we bind it up. Yeah, I was actually on
The song didn't go so holy, holy, holy. Yeah. All right, it didn't go so like that. Yeah. 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 So what happens is a man of God like you know, that little small